Hey everybody, this is Inner Ribbon Hero here with an unusual find. I went to the Richmond Train Club up in Richmond, California today, and they had tote after tote of junk shells and other fun kit bash fodder. I managed to buy this entire bag for just $9. As I walked out, price dropped to just $1. So <laughs> I feel good about at least giving eight more dollars to the Richmond Club so they can continue their operation. So let's dive in. This is a, an amazing journey through model railroad history. First up is an AHM helium car. This is currently still, after 50 years, the only accurate helium car for US Navy helium service. They use these for the uh, Macon and Akron airships and many other things after the war, notably rocketry. Uh, some of these cars still survive today. And there's multiple articles on how to upgrade this into a fine scale model if you feel so inclined. So I grabbed one of these for pennies on the dollar. This is a model die casting blind end caboose, uh, roughly a Santa Fe prototype, uh, basically as is. That should be a nice upgrade into an older Alta maintenance of way car. These two are fun. These are pickle car kits. Uh, these were done by Athern decades ago. You can see that one has been super detailed with even more cross bracing and stuff. Somebody actually spent a lot of effort uh, putting that together, which looks quite nice. The other one has custom truss rods. So clearly somebody was in it to win it as far as detail. So these will be fun to upgrade at some point for a pickle car. Uh, this is a <laughs> General Steel Castings flat car. You get this in a Bachman train set all day long. Um, I loved these cars as a kid, and the car itself actually is worthy of upgrading. Um, it's just the trucks and couplers that need a little love. Um, the battleship rivets on here seem very appropriate for this car, so that should be fun to kit bash. Uh, this is a Proto 2000 E6A shell uh, for Louisville and Nashville. This will be a test mule for one of the Alta E6s to see what the uh, paint scheme will look like. Pretty excited about this. Also got this for, you know, pennies on the dollar. The whole bag was $9, so can't go wrong there. This is a frame from a Walther's F85 intermodal car, so perhaps I'll do some kit bashing using this device and turn into a new flat car. This is just an Athern 50-foot gondola, but it has one of those expensive chooch loads in it, uh, notably with a 32 Ford kind of lumped in there. Kind of fun. Um, not exactly the world's most realistic load, but definitely evocative. So I'll probably save this out of there and scrap the car. Here's a, let's see, this is a Ravel flat car with a Roco deuce and a half truckload on it. Looks like the later Kaiser built truck on it, so I'll probably save the the load off of it and then demolish the flat car. We've got a trio of these absolutely gorgeous Lindbergh Toys uh, kits that go together just like Atherin Blue Box kits. I believe I have two Chicago Northwestern gondolas just like this. It even comes with a little load, which is rather cute, and a box with trucks in it. Um, and one flat car. So those will be fun to build. These seem like unusual or rare prototypes, so that's why I picked them up in the first place. This is a model power observation Harriman car. Ostensibly accurate. It is the correct length, and you can see all the crap falling out of it. <laughs> Clearly it has been mistreated in its past life. Hopefully we'll be able to fix this up into something worth keeping and operating. This is an MDC. Pullman Palace Combine. I'm pretty excited about this. I almost bought a couple of these off of eBay for far too much money, so it was nice to pay less than a dollar for one of these. Uh, they're fairly well detailed. They are the correct length. They have just enough detail to capture your eye, but nothing to nitpick about. If you're a prototype modeler this period, probably not good enough, but for my purposes, I'll definitely be using this for an older maintenance of way car. In amongst the junk, there was a, a 1940s era first aid kit made out of pressed steel. I couldn't resist. I'm the, I'm confident the guy used to put, to put small model railroad parts in these things. There are half a dozen of these things in with the box that I was digging through. So just a nice thing to have in the workshop. I'll probably actually put first aid in it. No reason not to. Uh, this is a Proto 2000 E7 shell on deck. Doesn't look like it has any of the details since it's on deck. Um, obviously it got separated from the rest of its box and its drivetrain. Again, it will make a wonderful test mule for some of the Alta paint schemes, so I'm looking forward to that. These two are a remarkable piece of model railroading history. These were made by OK Streamliners, and to an extent I believe they're still offered today. You can still buy new versions of these, but the cool thing that separates these from, say, the Walthers or the AHMs or the 
Ather into the Reeve Rossi's is that this is actual extruded aluminum. This is metal. It's pretty spectacular with the cuts, the die cut holes for all the windows cut in there. And back in the day when these came out in the 50s, they were contemporary models of the cars that were coming out on the main line. And they were probably some of the only ones that were the correct length to be able to run. So that's really neat. This dome car is especially fun with the silly free, prototype freelance Arizona lines decal. You can tell it's supposed to be a Santa Fe prototype with the Pullman standard segmented windows. The vacuform plastic dome is such a fun touch. Let me see if I can glint it so you can see. It actually has the pane detail. So if you wanted to separate those out and paint them yourself, you could. It's a very nice touch. Somebody went the extra mile and put, looks like prizer figures in the dome, which is pretty fun. I'm not sure the uh, prototype had reflective silver paper floors though. <laughs> but just a, definitely a fun little piece of model railroading history. Part of a Walther's street and curb set, those will be useful, especially this uh, Spanish tile plaiding for perhaps the plaza in Esquina, so that's why I got that. I got numerous comments in my J3 Bachman article saying, you should compare it to the AHM model. You should do an in-depth thing. So here I am having spent less than a dollar on an AHM Riverasi J3 Hudson. So you're welcome. I'll probably do a video on this at some point. It's an exceptionally good condition despite having been carelessly thrown into the large plastic tote that it ended up in. So this should be very nice. I doubt it runs, but we never know with these things. They're mechanically simple. And it looks like all the valve gear is intact, which is quite spectacular, actually. So that was a good get. Another Pullman Palace Combine, a Pullman Palace Sleeper, and a Bachman Brill trolley car body, probably good kid bashing fodder for something. Uh, these will also become maintenance of way cars for the Alta, probably going to be kit bashed in some respect and definitely cleaned up. Another good test mule for the Alta, this FA that was in Looseville, Nashville. Looks like somebody tried to custom paint it and gave up after trying to do a decaling job that was unsuccessful. Oh, I can see why they gave up. That's all. That's unfortunate, but it should make for very good kit bashing. Perhaps after I'm done, maybe I'll do up a shop scene where it's being disassembled or rebuilt. That should be fun. Here's some injection molded plastic letters. Not exactly enough to spell too many things, but I'll see if I can find some Spanish words. Perhaps the uh, wordsmiths out there can figure out a bakery or a cafe that I could do using these letters. So let me know in the comments. This is an old Mantua low-sided flat car, <laughs> lettered and weathered for the Central Pacific. That's kind of fun. Just a cute little thing. Another thing that may be a maintenance of way thing or perhaps for some sort of 60s spaghetti western movie set. We'll see what happens with this thing. This is a model die casting Alco GEIR box cab. This is probably the most popular one in the maintenance away scheme. This has its original, you can see the original Shea style center drive here with the weird drive links. Actually, I mean, mechanically it's closer to a Heisler, but this is the same drivetrain they used in the Shea. Um, the drivetrain is a coffee grinder, so I probably won't use it. The shell is always useful. I have a bunch of these shells. What is next? Ah, the piece de resistance, the Athern F45. This will become one of the Alta 68 paint jobs so we can test it out and see what it looks like before I commit my pair of Athern Genesis models to the Alta paint scheme. So that should be fun to do. Looks like somebody did some extra details. Looks like somebody plopped in a rotating beacon and a bunch of other things, did some decaled number boards. Looks like somebody actually did care about this at some point. So that's good to see. Hopefully it'll run. Yeah, it's a powered version. So that'll be fun. Here's another piece of model railroady history. This is a an AHM container crane thing. So you'd put the track in here and you'd have this little overhead gizmo that would come in and pick up a little 20 foot container using this guy. Um, I actually have the 20 foot container too. I managed to find it in the pile of stuff. So we'll play with this at some point. It probably will not end up on the Alta, but it will make for a fun little a demo and toy thing to enjoy later. Uh, just got this ultimately beat up Bachman Niagara, mostly because I wanted to play around with some of the drivers and 
uh, take some measurements off of uh, various parts and probably scrap it out for various things here and there. Nothing too special about this, it was just floating around in the pile. True. Uh, Two thirds of an Atherin SW7. Uh, it looks like it's powered and it looks like it should run, so that'll be fun. I'll probably use the drive for a future Doodlebug kit bash or something, but in the meantime, it'll sit here looking pretty. Perhaps one of the more underrated models, this is a Walther's uh, Trainline GP9M. It has the wide body like the old Atherin, so it's not prototypically correct. However, the outstanding thing about these models is the drivetrain. This has a really heavy-duty can motor with flywheels and excellent electrical pickup. If you needed to get a first HO scale model for a smallish child, you know, sometime under 10 years old or 10 or 12 years old, I'd suggest one of these. They're so bulletproof. They can, they'll run forever and they won't let you down. Next we have a little gem. I think this is an Aristocraft 040 Camelback. This thing is ancient. It is made of brass though, so I am curious. It may be something else. Let me know in the comments if you know what this is. Either way, I have a friend who's obsessed with camelbacks and this will immediately be sent to him. Here's a Atherin cab, presumably, maybe even from... Oh, hey, I found the cab to the engine that I rescued from the pile. Well, that was good, good of me, so that's good. So now we have a complete SW9 or 7. That's fun. Here's another piece of model rail running history, a true scale building kit. Inside we have a little blacksmith car, which will be a very fun build. I always like the true scale stuff. They're fun, totally forgotten about by model, modern model railroaders. But look, sprung trucks, arch bar trucks in like 1950. Very cool. And finally, <laughs> a display case. Apparently, this was for the Southern Pacific Transportation Company for $347 million leverage lease financing for General Electric Corporation, advised by Trinity Advisors Incorporated. Boy, what kind of bad financial deal was that back then? I can only imagine. So I guess maybe I'll put some sort of General Electric Dash 7 in it or something and uh, just keep it for laps. But it has a nice piece of, uh, looks like true scale roadbed in there. I'll probably put a nicer HO scale model in there so it can be appreciated in a dust free environment. Well, I hope you've enjoyed some of the ridiculous things that I found. Um, I may go through some of the other stuff, but for the meantime, this is what you find, the magic of the junk bins at a model railroad show. This is kind of what makes them worthwhile. You know, you can overpay for things on eBay if you're looking for exactly what you want, but for that inner impulse buyer amongst us all, this is the way to go. This has been an Urban Era. I really appreciate you sticking around if you have. Check out the Patreon, and I look forward to seeing you in future videos. Thanks, and goodbye.